Hey all, welcome back to this side of the world. This is episode 4 of Photography with Friends, where I feature three new friends who are either professional, hobbyists, and photo enthusiasts. We ramble from everything photography related to the perils of life. Today we are blessed with three new faces and voices. But before I introduce them, I would like to thank Dennis Lee, who was on the previous podcast, for letting us use their recording studio at the Alcove to do this episode. So the Alcove is an arts social public space where people can hang out and be creative. They have an array of monthly workshops held here on a pay-what-you-can basis, and they also have uh, f- art supplies available, open space, free for people to use at the location. They also hold music jams every Thursday, creative gatherings every quarter of the year, and open mics at the last Friday of each month. It's a space that makes you feel welcome and belonging. Now to the three new faces and voices of today's episode, Pat Clark, Gertrude Crawford, and Ringo Yip. Pat is a photo hobbyist who is a lover of animals, small towns, and vibrant sunrises. He enjoys capturing textures and details along his strolls. Pat is also a motivated being, hoping to start his new tour business to generate interest in the charm of small towns within Alberta. Gertrude has a passion for faces, the portrait kind. She has a way of making models feel comfortable, not just through her photos, but in person as well. Her zen shooting includes animals, especially birds. Gertrude's versatility of photography spreads into the fine arts of the human body through boudoir. Ringo is a photo hobbyist with a love of the slower pace, serene settings of scenes. He captures soft tones and golden light. Wielding both digital and analog cameras, his photos will be sure to give you the feels. Please welcome Pat, Gertrude, and Ringo. How are you guys feeling today? Good, good. Good, good. Good. Waiting for spring. Yeah, it's been pretty cold down here. That's a yeah, so heads up, just in Calgary right now, we had like three, four, like full th- snow days of like nonstop snowfall, and it's in March, late March. Pat also told us by the end of the week, we have more snow coming, so that's also awesome. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a pleasure to have more snow here, but we definitely need it because of the, to prevent all the forest fires from like being you know, sur- surfacing back up again this year. Yeah. I think those forest fires in Fort Max, I'm so happy if the Mother Nature figures that out and mm-hmm. sends the snow to Fort Mac and mm-hmm. says be. Do they get really like, much more drier there than here? It's supposed to be fires still going from last year. It hasn't been put up, put down yet. So there's mm-hmm. fires underneath the snow still oh. lingering. Mm-hmm. It's kind of scary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did not know that was a that was a thing. That's yeah, a thing. me neither. That is a thing. Oh. Those are strong fires and if they keep going even after snow is yeah, like they're watching it. Mm-hmm. So maybe Mother Nature can also get the memo and just send a little bit more that way. <laughs> yeah, more rain as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys get to shooting during the forest fires or you feel like it's not the place and time? I didn't shoot any fires. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. I feel yeah. like it's sort of wrong. Yeah. But I guess some of the landscape shots for sunsets were kind of mm-hmm. cool with all the smoke. Yes. So I guess if I was out set up, I might, that probably would. Yeah, all the yeah. orange yeah. and the sun being like almost like blood red sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Almost like apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely got like the the Blade Runner twenty forty nine vibes. Yeah, um, yeah, but I I definitely was not prepared to take any photos. I yeah. like never had my camera on me mm. any of those days. Mm. I don't know. It was it was bad. Yeah, I wonder if those um, like the gray smoke you get from it is good for cameras. Oh, because the yeah. deck and stuff was always full of like little oh. leaky things. Yeah, like if the dust part- particles yeah. might get into the the lens and stuff. Hmm. I feel like it's like pretty sealed enough to prevent it, but yeah, I never have shot during. Yeah, yeah. just protecting, just just bad to breathe in as well. So it's hard on the lungs for a lot of people. Yeah, I just stay hungry. Mm-hmm. It's actually really crazy how 
far that smoke went. Like, um, there was a couple like photographers, photographers I follow from like New York Mm -hmm. and they were getting the exact same effect Mm -hmm. as like they were here. Yeah. It was wild. I think there are also forest fires up in Quebec as Mm -hmm. well. So it might've been from there too. Yeah. Yeah. San Francisco had like a really big one too. Or like it was drifting to San Francisco. You could see the, the, the bridge and all the smog. Yeah. Or Chicago as well. Yeah, does it seem like there's a lot more like forest fires recently? Yeah, I was told it was like more last year than normal. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I thought the year before was worse. Was it? Because mm-hmm. remember it was heading towards Jasper, it took out Waterton. Got all the way up to the city. That was the year before. I know what last year too. Cause I've seen some photos because I wanted to go down there, but uh, yeah. Hmm. What is in Waterton, anyways? Um, uh, they've got some nice waterfalls, some nice walking trails. It's well. Yeah, I haven't. Like I haven't been there. Because it's against people, there's so much like deer and stuff in the city itself. It's well like bears. More bears. Where's Waterton from here? A couple hours. And a half. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember going as a kid. Like I barely remember, but like um, I guess I just didn't really appreciate it. So I think it'd be cool to like, revisit it again. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, two hours, but like seven days back when you're a child in a car. Yeah. So yeah, two hours is actually not 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 that crazy yeah. now. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Especially if you come to the wild for the time. Okay. I think it's end of May, right? End of May, beginning of June. Yeah. Sure. It's and there's Lundberg Falls, like five minutes from, like it's so oh. close. It's mm-hmm. worth stopping in at Lundberg Falls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like south and west, or well, more south. More south. Mm-hmm. Is it it oh, okay. Huh. Highly recommend it. Hmm. We used to go at least twice a year, but then after the fire, like there was like less birds and just kind of. But now it's coming back, so it should be good. It should be good to go. Hmm. Put it on the list. It's a good day trip. Yeah. You don't have to stay the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like last time we drove all the way up to uh, Emerald Lake, which is in BC. Yeah. That took us four hours to drive. Yeah, one three, three ish hours. Yeah, one way. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Day there. Yeah. It got super busy around like noon by the time we like f- started finishing up the, the loop around. And then, yeah, if we went eight, even a bit like later, it would have been too much. Like mm. the, people were having trouble finding parking, and yeah, it was a very touristy area, but yeah. very beautiful. Yeah, it's a good time to go. Yeah, it was good weather. I think it was summer, was it? Yeah, it was the summer. Yeah, that would make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen Emerald Lake in winter; it looks beautiful too. Yeah, just pictures of gone. Yeah, it's like a different feel when you go in the winter season. Especially if you go to Banff or Jasper, it's just like it's completely crazy. different from like summer. And it's like it's it's a it's cool that it's uh low season, so it's like there's not a lot of people there. But it's still as magical. Like you see all the, the snow covered trees and it's the serene like sometimes the the water is covered with snow, but like most of the time it's not. It's like half frozen ish. So yeah. it's pretty Mm-hmm. For the first time I went to Banff for Christmas this year, mm-hmm. like around Christmas, I should say. So pretty. Nice. Lots of lights, lots of stuff for little people. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. Mm-hmm. Is there any place you guys plan to go this year that you're looking forward to? Like a small town visit or anywhere outside of Calgary? Um, well, I'm planning on going to Drumheller in a couple weeks. Um mm-hmm. And because uh, I want to check some stuff out for my tour stuff, and um, there's I'm just I have lots of places to go to, mm-hmm. <laughs> lots of people to talk to, and lots of planning mm-hmm. before June. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll I'll probably be going back to like the Drumheller area. 
I don't know what the small town is, but I passed by and it looked like there was a couple of cool locations I want to check out. And I guess I, I'll add Waterton to that list now. So if I have like a spare day, I'll probably pop by and check it out. Mm, have to go by Dinosaur Provincial Park if you guys are going to Drumheller. I guess I didn't even know it existed till last year. Yeah. I was, is that how pretty that was? So it's pretty far. From, it's it? pretty far south from Drumheller. Mm-hmm. I think it's about two and a half to three hours about is it really? to Dinosaur. So I just, we go to Red Rock Coley. It's okay, if you haven't been to Red Rock Coley, gotta have to at least do it once. I yeah. think it's really pretty. It's on my list. <laughs> yeah. So coming back from Red Rock, we swung by Dinosaur Provincial Park and then came home. So I don't know if it's along the way or how it worked out, but Red Rock, we, we try to go like once a year mm-hmm. for the Harvest Moon. It's really pretty, I think. You get the whole place to yourself. There's like hardly any tourists there. So just it's five or ten people. Max seems to be there like the most of the time. Is it like still similar to Drumheller like uh, scenery? Like with the Badlands and sand? It's got its, it's own fair, beauty. Fair, fair. Okay. Fairly similar. It's got its own beauty. Hmm. While you guys talk, let me find some Red Rock Coolie. <laughs> Pictures. Is it the one with that's like kind of like curved into like the ma- the canyon, mm-hmm. and it looks it's got these big rocks. Which I we usually shoot models and stuff there. That's so they kind of oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Like, yeah. This is quite nice. It's. I'm like, surprised there's water. <laughs> there is no water. I don't know why there's water here. Don't trust the water. There's no water. It's just ground. There's no water. <laughs> It's just, just dry land. Okay. Just a rock shape. Uh, it's like almost like if you wanted to do like a Mars landing shoot, it would be the yeah. ideal place for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. I haven't, I've never heard of this place. It's so like, beautiful. Um, no, definitely try to go there this summer. It's super far, but I want to go to Riding on Stone Provincial Park. Where is that? It's southeast Alberta. Okay. Like it's far, a far. Mountain. No, it's on the opposite side. Yeah. Like directly opposite. It's like on the border of Saskatchewan and the States. <laughs> Around there anyway. <laughs> it's a long drive. Like five hours kind of thing or? Three or four hours, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Like you, I'd, I'd have to stay somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. I'm not sure why I do like that area. Hmm. <laughs> Stay in medicine, which is really cheap to say compared to anywhere in Alberta. So hmm. that's probably the other reason why I like it. It's probably like 50 bucks a night to get a room with breakfast. So. Hmm. Yeah, medicine Hat is also on my list, but I don't know what's there. <laughs> I think it's just another city, isn't no, it? It's <laughs> city, and that's a graffiti. Besides that, I don't have anything else exciting. So mm. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's still the Saskatchewan uh, sand dunes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just bring some models over and just take photos. Like fashion shoots, yeah, yes, like the the see through kind of like cloak and stuff, yeah. But yeah. that's got to be like a weekend or like multi day event. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so two day event. They got to kind of stay in Saskatchewan because by Sand Hills, you get there's nowhere to stay, so you get to drive in. It's worth doing at least for once, you know? Yeah, yeah a couple of days or a weekend would be nice just to stop by the small towns along the way, too. And then you would need more than a weekend. Yeah. Like four days. Yeah, maybe. a couple of days. Yeah, we'd like to do a trip like that with a group, maybe. It's like a small group of us. Well, considering driving to the States right now with our money, it's not worth it. It's, well, it's a good time to explore Alberta mm. and all the small towns. Oh yeah, that's right. I, last time I checked, the U.S. dollar is like 
plummeting compared to Canadian dollars. I was just like... Canadian dollars plummeting. Canadian dollar is always plummeting. US dollar is always going up. We can never afford to Oh, no. I, I checked it last it time. We're plummeted? Doing, yeah. I hope it plummets. Yeah, Canadian Sorry. dollars was worth, worth more than the US dollar. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I'll be. <laughs> but how be. No. There's like, no way. No, on there's Friday. no way. Can't be. There's no way. I'll yeah. go back to Google that, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the defense to a dollar. <laughs> Somebody sends for a dollar? No, no, I didn't look it up. I'm just saying that's what it always is. I'm looking up sand hills. I'm sure we had pictures of sand hills. See? It's not more. It never is more. <laughs> online shopping. Yeah. Finally, I'm supposed to go yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I went to Sri Lanka and found out that now they only accept U.S. dollars. I come from Canada. I can't afford U.S. dollars. What are you talking about? <laughs> Is it just everywhere in Sri Lanka you were there? And they're like, oh, uh, because US. After COVID, they had a lull of tourists. So they didn't have enough dollars to be able to buy stuff. For that reason, they suddenly passed a roll up in and they, a week before I landed. So all the hotels I had booked in Canadian, they're like US. It was all, it was all charged in US. That's messed up. It was very messed up. But I'm not a Sri Lankan citizen anymore, so I had to take it. Kind of what the sand here looks like. Okay. Remember, I showed boudoir, so then it all starts going wrong. So then I tried to stop scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty. Yeah. It, Closest to a desert I'm gonna get to, so yeah. is it like really small? It is pretty space small, there? so you have to kind of see your angles, mm -hmm. and then you make it look like sand for miles, but it's not as wide or big as you think it would be. I guess that's it's still for Saskatchewan it's still to have, yeah. yeah. Like, where did the sand come from? And the route to sand hills, I guess it's some bird pathway too, so apparently you can watch out for all these cool birds. But we were with a group that didn't care about so <laughs> the sand flew right back out of there and I got kind of like, where is that? Is that so lovely? Oh. <laughs> yeah, next time go with a group and be like, oh, we're only looking for birds now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody would go with me. <laughs> I'm sure Ian will go with you or um, who else? <laughs> I feel like a lot of people in Joe and Ian would still prefer some girls to go with us, right? I don't know. I'll go. Huh? I'll go. Have <laughs> <laughs> people to sit in the car for five and just to shoot birds. <laughs> I'll go to my lens. <laughs> <laughs> There's surprisingly a lot of people in our group that goes birdie. Yeah. 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 So I guess like for equipment wise, is is it just like literally a telephoto lens that you would need, or well, anything larger would probably be so, but yeah. <laughs> just anything two hundred millimeter and over. 600 yeah. mm. That's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big boys. Yeah. No, you can't see any birds at 200. Mm. You'd have to crop it pretty good. <laughs> one of those uh, medium formats with like 100 megapixels or something to crop it enough to be able to see anything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't have that. It's really not that cool. <laughs> what do you like to take pictures of me? Um, lately, um, I think portraits, and I'm getting more back into street photography too as well. Um, I, f I was finding it difficult in Calgary because of just to comparing it to Toronto every time. There's a lot more things going on in Toronto. But now I'm starting to do more of it and like trying to look harder. So it's been more enjoyable that way. But I do really enjoy shooting like the small towns and hamlets when we go on like little road trips around, just capturing like abandoned buildings or, you know, just the scene of a random car in the middle of a field or like a random empty bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many like little hamlets around. It's great. Pretty nice. A rat law dog. <laughs> yeah. There was like a dog that kind of chased the car when we came into Retlaw. It was a small hamlet. 
And I think there was only one person living there. And he had a farm. And he had, like, two dogs. One was back in the, you know, like, by a fence. And then uh, the red law dog just, like, was chasing the car. And we're like, oh, no. Are we, are we going to get attacked by this dog? <laughs> 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 Joe opened his door. And he's like, oh, you're a friendly dog. And started wagging his tail. It's like, oh, just wanted pets. And started following us around while we explored the little town. Yeah. It took some nice poses, too. <laughs> yeah, it was just like sitting nicely in front of like a empty a shed or something. Yeah, you don't know. It yeah, it was like the size of an outhouse, but it wasn't an outhouse. It was yeah, it, it looked a like shed or something. Yeah, and, yeah. Posed for us, took some photos. So, Ringo, what about you? I know you at least. So, tell me what you like take pictures of. Um, right now, well, recently I haven't really been taking too many pictures. I had a pretty bad experience with some x-rated film so i've been getting kind of getting out of a rut a little bit but um mainly i like to shoot a bit of like street photography kind of thing um uh, yeah and just I'm intrigued <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm intrigued after you said x-rated and can't get past that in my head if anything else you said it's something you can share oh yeah oh yeah for sure i'm, I'm okay talking about it now i'm I'm, uh, I'm not as traumatized now but um yeah so last year i really got into film photo photography so um i'm like yeah every i can shoot film i can shoot film for everything so um i had a trip um to vancouver and I decided in my wisdom to just shoot film. And I brought like six rolls of like Portra 400. And then um, we're flying there. So I had the, like, as a, like a good millennial, I jumped on YouTube. And then after watching like three videos on like cats, um, I, looked up, <laughs> I looked up what happens like, if you put film through x rays. And every video was like, yeah, it's fine. Like, don't, don't worry about it. And me know nothing. I'm like, sure, yeah, it'll be fine. So I did not get them ha like hand checked or anything, and we put them all through the X-ray. And then I just did the entire trip, just worrying about nothing. And then when I got the scans back, like everything was just like crazy. Like all the, like um, all the portrait four hundreds are like super like green. Um, everything that was like dark was like purple. It was like. Yeah, it was bad. And probably like 80, 90% of the stuff that I shot was like unusable. So how are you supposed to travel with film? Um, I, well, May has more experience with it, but uh, apparently you're supposed to get them like hand checked. Like you tell the TSA or whoever mm -hmm. is helping you be like, I want these hand checked. And then they are not supposed to put it the x-ray or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so you just like do little swaps, make sure there's no drugs hiding in there, or like chips or anything from like hacking computers or whatever. And then just don't go through the X-ray because it damages the film. It was a lesson. Yeah, yeah, it was a really expensive lesson. It was, and of course, it had to be like Portrait Four Hundred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's um, it's like I guess like the Kodak professional portrait film. It's like pretty much like the standard like film shooters, um, but it's it equivalents to about like a dollar fifty a photo. So <laughs> financially, it kind of really sucked too. It's getting but, yeah, more expensive. It's, yeah, it's more so just losing those like memories, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it definitely hurt the wallet a little bit to scan a film that was kind of funky. <laughs> yeah, it just hurts more when it's your expectation. You're like, oh, yeah. It's gonna be this is from my trip that I went to, and this is like you take you get it back, and you're like, what, what the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah, because like, um, you guys probably all, all experienced it to a certain extent, but there is like, um, sometimes you just take a photo, and you like, no, it's like this is like the photo. There's nothing that could go wrong with it. Like everything just lined up with your vision, and I had quite a few of those, and then yeah, like half of those got posted, and like, oh. Usually yeah. when I have that moment. No matter what I'm shooting, I take my phone and I'm like, hold up, and I use my phone because I trust my phone over anything else I find. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's a smart one. Yeah, that's yeah. a. Smart it way also way. makes it look like I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like, phone cameras are so good now. It's good enough. And it doesn't, like, anything terrible happens with it in that sense. Yeah. 
yeah, so I, I think just moving forward for myself is just digital. It's a phone nearby. Yeah, phone <laughs> or it's like digital only when like traveling. True. Yeah. Or just have both. Yes. Yeah, I like yeah. to travel light, so I, I, got, yeah. I just got to choose one. Okay. Yeah. Or just super hand check them. Yeah. Only hand check. Don't cross the border without hand checking. Yeah. Lesson, <laughs> lesson learned. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, recently I, I started back up mm. um, with a bit of street photography and, and just, yeah, like like you, I'm just waiting for the snow to melt so I can just go around and yeah, just do anything really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this melting snow looks so bad. Yeah, it's just it's just dirty snow right now, slush. So Pat, you have pretty exciting news, new business. Tell us about it. Uh, oh, we. To our business for Southern Alberta, we'll be going to places like Drumheller and Fort McLeod and all over the foothills, like Longview, Diamond Valley, Oak Tokes. Um, and I'll be starting that hopefully June. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the vehicle I'm using is coming next month, crossing my fingers, that's true. <laughs> it will. Gotta manifest it. Gotta want it. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, that's my big thing. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing that. Mm -hmm. It's called Hidden Hills Tours. I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, the web, the website's up, it's running. I have a few things to update, but that's about it. It's almost good to go. Do you have pictures that you've taken in some of these places? Too? I have some pictures, yeah. That's one of the other reasons I want to go to some of these places because I want more photos and updated photos. Through like a location scout, maybe, yeah. so you can get good angles. Yeah, for example, Drum been there for eight or nine years. So all the photos I have is just with the old an old point and shoot digital camera. So I want some better photos with a better camera. Sure. And some of the places I'm going, I haven't been yet. So nice. I'd like to go there <laughs> before I take someone there. Nice. So, um, but yeah, it's just going around to places, talking to people, letting them know I'm doing this. So. And you have uh, the, one of the tours is interesting, the film tours. Yeah, I have three different film tours. Um, one that goes down to Fort McLeod and Vulcan and some and High River and a few things in between. One that goes to Pritis and Elbow Falls and Diamond Valley and Okotoks. And another one that goes to Drumheller. So someone and like other me places. that does film tours, what do you mean? Movie tours. Nice. Yeah, movie and TV. So like uh, there's a bunch of places where The Last of Us filmed. Um, a lot of Ghostbusters. Cool. Superman. Like the old, old Superman, the original. Um, and just some random ones, Rat Race and Unforgiven. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of different movies. Interstellar, hmm. Fargo. Yeah. No way, Interstellar's filmed around here? Yeah, they filmed in Longview and a couple of places around Longview as well, and, uh, and Okotoks at the oh, McMahon wow. or, or whatever the stadium is there, the Seaman Stadium. Yeah. I did not know that. I love it. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa. Yeah, be good for the film buffs to come on these tours. And yeah. Like, kind of explore. And also be people in Cal uh, Calgary or Alberta who don't know about these places. It'd be good yeah. for them to like take a look around and see all the interesting charms. I think eventually I might do one that goes north of Calgary. Mm -hmm. But right now I'll do the ones I have now. I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> so... But I'm not going anywhere west. There are too many other tours that go that way, so I'll let I'll let them do that. <laughs> I think Annie was filmed in Millerville or something, right? All those episodes of Annie. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. Is that the doll one? The scary doll. It's uh I'll, I'll send you the real name. Yeah. Terrible memory. <laughs> An Asian name. <laughs> It's popular. I'll send you the real Was it like Netflix or something? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Saw that Millerville landscape. So, 
It was an indie film uh, I watched recently, recently being last year. Uh, it, they used Drumheller as the location, and it was a French movie. Oh, I think it's... Um, I forgot the name of it. I watched it during the, like, the Calgary um, Film Festival. Yeah, I think I remember seeing something about that. Mm. Joe and I were talking about that last weekend. Mm. and it's, I think it's like Quest for Fire or something like that. I don't remember the the title. I'm That's also very bad. bad with memory, so. Yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing something about a French thing being filmed in Drumheller. Yeah. So I think I'm pretty sure I have that on my yeah. on my list. <laughs> yeah, because it does make it look like Mars. Yeah. yeah, it's like otherworldly kind of kind of feel to it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to starting it. <laughs> Make a little bit extra money here and there. Yeah, good luck and congrats on your new vehicle coming in. Thanks. Yeah, I know you've been waiting for a while. On that one. Yeah, yeah. We ordered it in November, so. <laughs> Finally. Coming. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Other people have waited like a year and a half for their Toyota vehicle, so mm -hmm. I'm glad it was only six months. <laughs> Dealerships don't have it? Is that what's going on? No, yeah, they, ha they have to wait for it to be made. You, They do have some on hand but it's like an, an extra like 10 grand so or more that's why it's all covid things hey yeah you pay more for it to be available doesn't so. make sense though. it's all like new everything's mm -hmm. the reason everything's reason in this covid now why prices are so expensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's harder to get things as well just like less uh, production of the things like the Fuji film, uh, five, this new one that came out and Fuji's only made a couple, like they didn't anticipate so many people wanting the camera. So there's a very long wait list for each store for the new, that new Fuji 100 or whatever. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not know. Yeah, so they're only manufacturing a couple at a time and they're only sending a couple at it's these locations. It is, because I heard they also did that to the the PlayStation uh, 5, was it, or 6? They also mm -hmm. did not do too many, and then they just anticipate this amount. and Because they would lose money if they made too many, right? But at the same time. The excitement of the meeting. Yeah. Um, ish. I think for that camera, no, you you literally could not make too many. Like, yeah, I think you wouldn't be able to yeah. make too many. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. One of my buddies got his pretty early because he placed a pre order um back in the day because he tried to buy an X one hundred X one hundred V, and then they told him the new one was coming out, so he's just like, no, I just put me on the wait list for like the six, and then yeah, he, he got one of the first ones. But yeah, like if, yeah, if you just got on the list now, it's probably like a year. Yeah, it's a year wait or yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Our TikTok. Crazy. Right, where yeah. that came from. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Because um, people look like, this is the camera that you need to make your photos feel like film. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then everyone just went for it. Because mm -hmm. like, it is like a. In essence, like a point and shoot, it's pretty easy to use. Yeah. 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 A lot of people who never did camera like photography have like probably picked it up or wanted to pick one up as well. Yeah. Yeah. And as shallow as it can sound, it, it could also be a fashion accessory. They look really good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you <laughs> <look them now. laughs> yeah. It yeah. looks like a film camera. Yeah. It looks all like the a silver and yeah. Yeah, it looks like an '80s like rangefinder kind of camera. Because mm -hmm. Fujifilm, their their signature is to make it look like film, like a film camera. All the dials are very like analog and tactical. So, is it the 100 V? Yeah, or that's the uh, the previous gen. So it's like the it's the BI, six now. Vi Vi six. yeah yeah. There's I'm just losing count of all the numbers now. Like it's just too many. <laughs> yeah, but. They're good looking cameras, but yeah. Yeah. Like a ish, no? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. So then why not why aren't people going after the Lenta this much? Um uh, I mean it's much more expensive. Yeah, this one's a lot more attainable. It's still pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 
twenty two, twenty three hundred bucks versus like a, yeah, like it's about like ten k <laughs> without without a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can get a Q2 or something. Yeah. yeah, some of the ones. If you look hard enough. Yeah, those are the ones some people don't want, though. Yeah. But still, like, it's too much. I think they say the soldier colors are really nice, too. Um, I th- I think they're pretty nice, but um, I don't know. Like, for for digital, I just think if you massage it enough, they all literally look the same. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, I guess... For I had a Fuji. I actually had the X100V before the hype, and then I sold it. So oh. now I kind of regret that. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, the colors were very easy to work with. Like um, out of the camera, they were very close to what I wanted already. So I guess in that way, yeah, the colors are nice. But yeah, for digital, I think if yeah, you massage enough, they just look the same. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it depends on your edit- editing software as well, because I know. Like Sony colors might look different because the the engine sees it differently and like renders the the coding differently. Like Sony or Nikon, Canon, if you're using Capture One, it's going to be different colors. If you're using Lightroom, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, Lightroom only. So, <laughs> yeah, there's too many different softwares. If it's just like one, it's it's good. <laughs> yeah. Lightroom is easy to use, so I just use Lightroom. Yeah, Photoshop, if I need to, like, maybe do some more editing, like, masking and things, so, yeah. But Lightroom has has improved their masking tools, too. Lightroom has made masking very, very easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just use Lightroom as well. Mm-hmm. I go into Photoshop once in a while, but barely any time. I got stuff. If I'm, even if it's a bird, I'm in Photoshop. <laughs> so that's why it's always a twig or something in the way like just have to get in there for some reason mm. how much time do you spend editing like, this is why i don't shoot <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels like i'm doing homework every day i'm just sitting in front of this thing going oh yeah i'd like to speed up my editing if there's one wish i had for myself but once you see something you cannot unsee it mm. I've discovered the uh, auto tool in uh, Lightroom, so I click that and then I just adjust it after no, that. It does a lot of the work for me. It's so easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> just for like sim- simple little things here and there. Yeah, just for like a like a edit to make it like technically nice. Yeah, I get. Yeah, the auto works really good. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go crazy with it, you you'll need to do it yourself, but. <laughs> I try not to edit too much. It's just yeah. move this cursor a little bit, extra, extra exposure, maybe do a bit of contrast, clarity, and that's really it. Yeah. Yeah. I so don't I, do too, too much. I don't really enjoy the process of editing that much either. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love editing. <laughs> I, I get. Yeah. I, I get. It's like dread. I'm like, it's like this toxic cycle. I, I, I boot it up. There's like a page of stuff i'm like yes it's time i'm gonna go do it and i edit like two of them and i'm like no this sucks and i just close the laptop it's like nope that's it's tomorrow's problem i did like a makeup shoot for like a makeup artist so while i was waiting for them to finish i saw her cat so i was like i love animals can't stop so i took a couple of pictures and i sent Mm -hmm. it back to her still haven't touched the girl I was supposed to, like, I didn't, I haven't touched the editing part of it because I see everything that mm-hmm. I need to, like, fix, so I haven't touched it. So when I send the cat picture back, the lady's like, oh, this was probably a quick edit. Thanks. You know, looks beautiful. I'm mm-hmm. thinking, if you only knew, that cat never once opened its eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is five different eyes I've had to, like, <laughs> layer and make it look like the cat's eye. I just went, should I show her straight out of camera? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick turnaround. Yeah. But I'll shoot one day and I'll edit that night. I edited the cat. <laughs> it's like it's like Joe. He goes home and within the hour he's already uploaded like all the photos edited. It was- <laughs> it's good to be like that because the person's excited, wants to see the pictures. Yeah, By the time 
exactly mm. by the time I send the pictures, everyone's forgotten the shoots happen and mm. they're like bored with it by then because 10 of the people I was with have already sent them pictures. So I think ideally, Joe's probably. Yeah, I'm just impressed how fast he does it. Because he does auto. <laughs> <laughs> it's he must not zoom. That zoom function's terrible. Never zoom into your picture that much. <laughs> You'll see way too much. <laughs> Zoom so it big enough, you kind of go around, and you're like, oh, it's there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And you can do a bit of product photography. Yeah. Like Never we, zoom. Yeah. You can, you can get rid of all like, the little dust pieces. Yeah. I do a lot with that film. So it's once you invert it and with Negative Lab Pro, I zoom in, uh, take all the little like dust particles out. It's, oh, one by one. Take them out, zap them out. It's really weird. I feel like I I wouldn't yeah. do it if it's like film. I feel like it adds to like the character. It does. Sometimes yeah. it just takes too much. Sometimes it's just too much dust, and it just takes away from the photo. So I like mine a little clean. So I just zoom in and kind of laboriously go through it. But digital photos, I just like just spend like five, like two minutes on each one, or less than that minute. Couple of the walks I did. Um, I've been trying the styles, like Nikon styles. You just click a oh, style, yes. you take a picture. Mm-hmm. And then those, I'm not zooming in. I'm just like cropping, sending, and being like, mm-hmm. oh, not bad. <laughs> There's no people and, and stuff. So it's mm-hmm. kind of... So. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you presets? No. Uh, maybe sometimes. I like try a couple of this to see what it looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Some seems to kind of sometimes work out well. Sometimes. Sometimes. Kind of, yeah, it does something you normally wouldn't do, and it's like, it's kind of fun. Yeah. So when you're doing your portrait work, do you tend to, like, zoom in and, like, fix everything up and make it nice and clean, or? Try. Yeah. And then miss the most obvious at times. <laughs> it's always after you, like, download it or, like, put it on your phone and you look at it and you're like, Wait, I didn't see that before. I have to go back and edit. And, yeah. Oh, I hate those. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you just see something, and then you got to fix it that on that photo, and then you got to look through all the other yeah. ones. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate that so much. <laughs> or else you just can never sleep. You're like, did I mess up on the other like four? Who loves Photoshop AI? Love it, Katie. I haven't That's- tried it. I've used a little bit. Yeah, I've tried it a little bit. It's fun to play with, but I don't typically use it on my photos that much. Sit on anything. Left the bird on wire. You change. You circle the wire, and you put a tree, and then it's like looks natural. Like if you <laughs> tree, it's wild. It cuts <laughs> out the claws just perfectly. It's so mm-hmm. awesome. Did they just take a random tree from Google Stocks or what? You could write down the branch you want, oh. or then it gives you like three options to pick from, mm-hmm. and or you just keep putting variations, and it'll just keep spitting it out to the like, one you're happy with. Oh. It's really amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wild what it can do it's now. It's wild. Yeah. Or like, let's say you take a picture of a person and you didn't get enough living space like mm-hmm. next to them and you want the picture to breathe. Yeah. You just use a crop tool, enlarge it, mm-hmm. and it'll just fill in exactly what was in that room yeah. on, from the other side. Like it's just it's magic. It's insane. It's insane. You don't have to worry about centering. You don't have to worry about composition because magic happens. Everything okay. centered or right yeah, it's pretty nice. Perfect. It's definitely a tool. It's a yeah. Tool. Mm-hmm. yeah. What's your guys' take on uh, like that sort of AI technology mm-hmm. and like photography? Like how, how they play together? Well, some say like when the, the jeans company and stuff start using AI models, like there goes the jobs for the models, the photographers, the editors. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we'll all, we all have a uh, place in this world like we'll all find our can't fight technology might as well learn to live with it what do you guys think i don't think it'll be big enough for them to replace jobs that's the thing i think 
it's like a more of a enhancer just to like if you were gonna mess up on a shoot it might be a good like kind of backup plan to have but also it gives you the question of like how much of the photo was ai and how much of the photo is from you and like is that a photo that you took or is it like more something more digital that it was enhanced from the the artificial intelligence so you embrace it I'm not sure. I'm on, like on both ends because it's like it also is an art style. That the fact that you're using AI and like kind of different using different kind of parts of it to make it your own, but you're using other people's work or like I'm not exactly how sure how like it works exactly, but like is it really like you kind of thing? Like I'm. Yeah. Yeah. What about your take back? Um, I think, I don't know if it'll completely replace photography. I think it'll be utilized sometimes, but I don't know if it'll replace photography completely. Interesting. I, I think, I think in, in terms of photography, like commercial photography, I, I think AI will just take over. Mm. Like, why would you pay somebody thousands of dollars to do this job when you can, in, in essence, like shoot it over and over again, exactly the way that you want to. All right. Like, yeah. Like computer to type something, like type yeah. it out, which will take you five minutes, yeah. and it will be flawless. Yeah, and it's relatively free. Yeah. But I, I think, in terms of like artsy photography, like things you would just do for yourself, I don't think that can be ever replaced. Yeah. Um, I think there's an authenticity and like a genuineness to like the photos you actually take. But yeah, I think for like commercial stuff, mm. yeah, I think that's done. Could be. Yeah, assuming that AI technology gets better. It's getting mm. better. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty darn good now. It's getting but, better. Like as long as like <laughs> as soon as it can like actually draw people, it's, yeah. like, it's like game over. Yeah, when they could properly do hands and feet. They yeah. can. They're getting. Are they getting better? Yeah. <laughs> Compared to, like, the very first AI, like, for example, a video that they did, like, it was, like, Will Smith eating spaghetti. It's just, like, his face all over the place, and compared to now, it's just, like... I saw it with, like, a hot dog commercial that was generated by AI. It was, like, terrifying. I saw that one, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Good or bad? Really bad. Yeah, Yeah, there were, like, people throwing up, like slushies and then their eyes were all over the place their mouths were like off and it's just it's very terrifying <laughs> but it's 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 learning yeah. yeah since i'm not a commercial photographer mm-hmm. i'm not scared of it at this point in time i think people will eventually miss that human touch to it in a way it's kind of like social media goes in cycles right it's like a lot of just like artificial things and then people could drop back and be like hey this is not real they're showing just the highlights of everyone's lives so people become more like oh i'll show the flawed life part of like maybe i've going through the process of cancer so they document everything and it's a little more real and people will kind of miss that part of like you know mm-hmm. life and uh, authenticity i guess so i'm just thinking if it were to go to that degree of like replacing commercial Photography, people move. Like, oh, we might just go back a little bit and it'll be a cycle. But who knows? We'll see where it goes. My my hope is that a uh, film comes back for reels, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, because then you, you literally cannot fake it. You, phys- you have a physical <laughs> thing of what you took. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds exciting. See it. Instant gratification. Yeah, it's like a journey in itself just to go get it developed and then scanned and it's a whole different process that you go through and it's like a bit of like your artist touch to it each time you do something. But also expensive mistakes. Yes, very expensive. Yes. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. 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 It's just sad a lot of the dis- like discontinued films are, are happening because like there's less um people being able to like um fix those machines that like uh make the mass produced like roles. So 
more companies, smaller companies are trying to make more of the small film stocks here and there. So, and Kodak prices keep going up and, you know, every year. <laughs> they just make it more expensive for us. But people who shoot film who really love it will keep shooting film. Like me. I'll just accept that I'm going to be broke for the rest of my <laughs> life <laughs> because of it. <laughs> you know, maybe it would be like, are you guys like familiar with like Dune? Like that universe? Yeah. Not really. Okay. Uh, well, essentially <laughs> it's like, um, like humanity has reached like this point in like technology where um, AI is like so supreme. There is like a, it tried to like overrule the human race. And then pretty much the human race did like a hard reset, got rid of AI. So they still have like high technology for things, but there are certain things that are like kept analog. So like planes and stuff, like mm -hmm. one by hand kind of thing. So maybe this will be kind of like one of those things where <laughs> we'll just hit this like plateau and there's like, <laughs> we just don't progress any farther because we know it's going to encroach on that creativity or what we're, um, yeah, artistic vision or whatever. I think everyone's always pushing boundaries. So I don't think anyone's going to stop. That's Either true. Way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm. You're hopeful. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm a, I'm a AI. <laughs> I'm not uh, fully or like full AI everything. Yeah. But well, you think it helps to some degree? To some degree. Mm. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I'm on like a. My tinfoil hats for like the, the Skynet <laughs> conspiracy. So, yeah. mm. I think it's helpful so far for me. Mm. I do like it. Plus, what's the point in fighting it? It's there, so you know how to use it. Yeah, yeah. Take advantage of it yeah. when you can. Do you think it affects your graphic design work? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I feel like it's kind of the same thing with like uh cameras like digital cameras they made them even something super powerful like your like your z8 <laughs> <laughs> no. um yeah something super powerful like the z8 like they're still like auto modes like you like a 10 year old could pick that up and start taking amazing photos with it maybe like the like the actual artsy side is not 100 percent there but technically the, the photos could be like phenomenal and i think um ai in the graphic design world is kind of like the same thing. Like for me, I can't, I can't draw really, but so I, in theory, you could use AI to kind of do that first step just to kind of like, um, maybe help envision your project or whatever. Um, yeah, to, to be actually used as a tool and a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Um, but at, yeah, I know, but there, it's a very, very fine line. It, it, it could very easily, you might as well just do the entire thing with AI. Mm -hmm. But um, So I'm also fascinated. So you don't draw, but you were drawn to graphic design? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like what, it's what uh, I don't know. I, I just... Uh, so, you don't draw either. I'm not judging you. So it was like this thing. Um, I took um, a program called Graphic Communications at State, and I just fell in love with like typesetting um and to make your like typeset stuff nicer like you do have to have graphical elements and that sort of stuff and i started working with like illustrator and a little bit more like like photoshop and that sort of stuff and i just kind of fell in love with it yeah and so, yeah um, being able to draw helps with photography so I got Procreate and the pencil, and I'm ready. Mm. So I haven't touched it much. It's been like five, ten years. <laughs> but it's in my blue pile. Mm. Do you have any idea what you're going to draw first? Birds? <laughs> <laughs> Cameras? <laughs> well, like sick people. <laughs> okay, first yeah. First step is starting. Yeah. Do you ever use your iPad for editing? Um, no. I should I wanted to. That's why I actually got the iPad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't have the stuff Photoshop has on the iPad. Just Photoshop. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I was gonna say if you edit, you're, maybe you're more likely to start drawing on it because mm -hmm. then you'll just have that device with you all the time. 
I do have it with me a lot, but I'm always watching YouTube. I don't think that's what I bought it for, but it's just a glorified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think any art form that you learn is going to help with photography. You can apply a lot of things to, to it because there are quite a lot of elements you can put in. Because I, I used to paint a lot and draw as well. Painting is also supposed to be really yeah. able to see the highlights and the shadows. Yeah, lights, lighting, and also just composition, what looks good, subject. It's just really helpful. Seeing it in a different way. So I think going to art galleries, even though people might not like, might think it's boring sometimes, just looking and staring at like just a painting for maybe a couple of minutes and just like, just kind of almost critique to yourself like, oh, the, the colors here look nice because of something or the composition is nice, why you like it. And you can see it as like a photo too, right? So it's like the photo, you can look at it and like judge it too and see what you like about it, what makes it a good photo, what makes it a, what could make it a better photo. I come from a world where um, being creative and stuff is not encouraged. It's usually school tuition back to school back to a tuition teacher mm -hmm. coming to your house so this is now when i'm like reliving my childhood mm -hmm. so trying to do anything crafty because for a shoot it's always nice to kind of build a set or do something it, it's it's i feel like i have two left hands while i'm trying to do something mm -hmm. but it's also kind of fun because i'm learning stuff mm -hmm. you know, learning to use google for the first time in my life so it's kind of fun i don't mind it <laughs> are I you built, doing like actual crafts well i built a little barbie box thing oh. so that was big for me to mm -hmm. do so i will show you some pictures some diys it. yeah mm -hmm. it's to me that was diy that took forever because i'm sure for a normal human building it is easy oh. Oh. but for me it's not that so it's pretty good it took a while. I think it took me three months to build this thing, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because it just kept collapsing and folding and coming <laughs> apart. <laughs> Trial and error. Things takes forever. Yeah. But and the results are very good. Yeah. Keeps me happy. Are you using it for your, like, uh, shoots or? That's my bad. Anything you want. <laughs> but I need to stop hanging out with photographers and network myself more, I think. But I feel like I'm surrounded by photographers. So marketing to us is not the best way to go. <laughs> yeah. We can always help each other out with connections. Be like, I know the studio space or I know some client is looking for this kind of photographer. And then you can like, you know, I might not be doing like family photos. So I can like read recommend Gertrude yeah. I just mm. won't be able to reciprocate because I'm just talking to another photographer <laughs> so I can't mm. be like oh me does this because <laughs> <laughs> I used to sell houses before so mm. when I left that world I left everything behind and then I just picked up the camera and just got immersed in this world so I mm. haven't really got out of this world to go meet some real life people mm. so that's in my to-do list but what would you do stay for would I? No, I don't think so. I, I've, I've spent 10 years been sitting in a show home, sitting in different show homes that I'm not sure I'm capable of stepping in there and being excited about being back to what feels like prison. <laughs> so you've like chopped that, burned that bridge down. Maybe. Just, I will yeah. not ever say never because, you know, never say never, right? You never know what life's ahead. But it's not something I would go diving in. Great. I'd be like, Bring your joy to do. Yeah, I think yeah. it kills my soul. <laughs> <laughs> that is very fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you'd want to do big ones, things like that, go into big giant houses and take photos in there and around the property. Well, when you're in big giant houses that are beautiful for like seven days a week, stuck in there because you have to fill in your show home time. Just not as exciting. You don't kind of see it the same way that somebody else would. Feels like you're walking back into prison with a cup of coffee <laughs> in your hand, waiting for the time to turn eight o'clock to be able to leave. So, yeah. Yeah. 
I think real estate photography is actually very uh, popular now. They, any like real estate companies are always looking for brokers. They're all looking for like photographers. But they're always like stepping up the game too to make the the photos look good. They have the drones and everything, so it's all package sets and you know it is getting pretty pretty competitive around in Calgary. Like I said, never say never. So who knows what my life might lead to? Mm-hmm. But have I applied for something like that? No. <laughs> is that something you're interested in? No. <laughs> Not at all. This is why I don't think I can do, like, prof- like a photography as a professional thing. Mm. Yeah, I feel like it might take away a bit of my love for it. Yeah, let's do it. Love it. Don't put uh put money. Like, unfortunately, you need to put money into it to be able to afford all the stuff. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the gear is not cheap. So. Is he doing it full time right now, or is he yeah. just yeah? No. He's a carpenter. Okay. So he, he can teach you about like some DIYs as well. He can, but he does mm-hmm. it for a living, so he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same thing, just yeah. wanna leave it out the door kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I intend this to stay a hobby. I don't plan to make money off of it. You don't wanna like expand it into your tours at all or anything? I have some photography in it, but it's part of the tour, and yeah. it's just... Yeah, you wouldn't want to do it, like, yeah, the whole time. Not, right? no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good. A lot of people just want to keep it hobby. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, like, just not going into making money from it. Because you still can be creative, and you have so it's such more opportunities to just shoot for yourself, kind of thing. Yeah, just got that flexibility of being able to like pick it up, drop it, pick mm. it up, drop it, take a long break, yeah. whatever you want to do. No stress. And, yeah, yeah. You no, know, you won't starve <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> yeah. or have the like, eat instant ramen for like three months. Yeah, I think it becomes a problem when you put all your money into it, and this is your 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 life, and you have family to take care of and everything. It's a lot more risk involved. So if you're not in it for it then yeah it's gonna be difficult i find there's so many photographers out there that are making money off of it that they could they could keep it (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah yeah once they're established i think they're fine usually Mm -hmm. yeah i just keep it on the side i also don't want to make it a full-time thing because i i enjoy what i do on the sides too so i like to have a juggle different jobs and just it's not about side income to get into yeah if somebody wants it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just some extra cash. Yeah. <laughs> in the pocket for film, <laughs> more film rolls or something. <laughs> it would be tough if your mortgage depended on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your family. Yeah. It would be tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I respect those people who do that. Okay, it's been an hour. <laughs> wow. That was that quick. It actually did not feel like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for coming again and taking the time out of your busy schedules to to talk with me and talk with us, this podcast. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add or close off with? Looking forward to your walks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me on this podcast. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to more walks as well. Hopefully I can attend them. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to doing the tours pretty soon here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to come for more walks and hopefully I will do one or two at my place this summer. So yeah, it'll be nice to do some more barbecue stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. By the fire. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that wraps up our fourth episode of Photography with Friends. Hope you guys join us next time, and we'll uh, feature three new friends. Thank you, guys. Richard, Ringo, and Pat. Again. Bye. 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 And that sums up our 
episode four podcast. I'd like to thank Pat, Gertrude, and Ringo for their time again, and I'll see you in the next one, featuring three more new photography friends. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, tell your neighbors, strangers, friends, people on the streets. See you on the next podcast. Stay colorful. Bye.